Good evening. As we discuss this morning at length concerning the, the, the purchase of our Savior with 30 pieces of silver, we discuss that I, I was asking if you would look at Deuteron- Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'd like for us to look at that in uh, just a moment, actually 23 and 18, uh, 23 and 18 there in Deuteronomy. We looked at what the, the scribes and the Pharisees, what they considered uh, the, the blood money, the, the money that purchased our Savior, why they considered it was blasphemy or it was unholy, unclean, and that it couldn't be brought into the treasury, it was based on Deuteronomy twenty three eighteen. It says, You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in payment for any vow, for both of them are an abomination to the Lord your God. Some will attribute this passage to why they said we couldn't, they couldn't bring the blood money into the treasury. And if so, that they are comparing our Savior to a prostitute and to a dog. Some translations will, will bring this word dog as a male prostitute, a dog, seeing him as low as this. But if they're referring to him in this reference, they're, they're, they're seeing this as ill-gotten gain. They're seeing this as, as, as money that has ill repute and, and should not be brought into the treasury. But it, if that's the case, it might be condemning them for what they did. So some have mentioned that this was most likely referring to 1 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 6, beginning... Then he, David, called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name because you have shed so much blood before me on the earth. And if this is what they're referring to in in reference to blood money... In essence, they saw the blood was on the money, but not on their hands. So they recognized at least that, that this, this process that Judas had betrayed and they paid him. They, they'd agreed to do this, that it was blood money. It was evil, but the money was evil, not them for what they had done. And they had justified, they had rationalized their efforts, their unjust efforts. But notice, later on, when the church was established, they recognized the power of Christ, but somehow didn't see that it applied to them. In Acts chapter 4, 5, beginning, it says, On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of a high priestly family. The same people who were involved with the murder of our Savior. And when they had sat them in the midst, they inquired, By what power and by what name do, did you do this? They healed the lame beggar in chapter 3. Then Peter, verse 8, he tells them, You asked. He says this, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone and there is salvation in no one else, for is, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. It almost shows in it, maybe that, they, that there's a glimpse, a glimmer of hope that they might turn. They recognized these men could not have been we're not educated like they were, and therefore they had this boldness, they had this, this wisdom, and they had sat at the feet of Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. Wow, there's still that glimmer of hope. Maybe they saw that there was nothing they could say that would oppose this. 
Does this mean that they're going to believe? Verse 15, but when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, what shall we do with these men? For a notable sign has been performed through them, and it is evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Wow, they're, they're saying they can't even deny what has just taken place. Surely they're going to obey. Surely they're going to repent. Verse 17, but in order that it may spread no further among the people, they said, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. Seeing is not always believing. Their belief, they had enough belief to the point they couldn't deny it, but they couldn't accept it either. What would they have to give up? They would have to give up their place. Caiaphas, the high priest, Annas, the high priestly family would have to lose their priestly uh, robes. They would have to lose their status because Jesus is the priest, the great high priest and king. They may believe it, but they weren't willing to accept it. It was too much for them to give up. James chapter 2, we're told that if you believe, you do well. But even the demons believe and tremble. We recognize that belief is not enough. They recognize that the money that purchased our Savior was blood money, but it wasn't enough that would bring them to repentance. This evening, we have an opportunity. As we ask the question, do you believe, that demands more than just a, an acceptance within your mind. It demands obedience. It demands repentance. And we're offering an invitation here. If you stand this evening and you believe that Jesus is Lord, but you haven't obeyed His word, you're not living according to what He has commanded. And you stand condemned. This evening you have an opportunity to repent of sin that's in your life. And this invitation is for you. Maybe you haven't repented of the sin that's in your life and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The water behind me is, is, is ready. Are you ready? If you have a need tonight, won't you come? While together we stand and sing.